So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll tell you about Anachrony by Mind Clash Games. A sci-fi game of worker placement and time travel. This is a very innovative game. It's very different, it's very unique. It takes this known thing of worker placement, but it does so many new and different things with it. So let me first explain a bit about what the game is and how it works. So the nature of this game is it is sci-fi. It's set in the future where each kind of clans or tribes or factions, which are called paths, who want to rule the world come the apocalypse. Thankfully, because of when the apocalypse happened or the impact, the cataclysmic event in the future, it brought along this item called Neutronium, which allows time travel. So we've actually been warned by the future us that this is coming. However, it is eons away. That's why this game is broken down into eras. It is very much a game that is played over a long time which fits because it takes quite a long time to play, but it is a very rewarding game to play. In each of these seven eras, and what you have is you have four eras, the impact, and then three more, you will be playing your workers. Now, if you've got locations built on your board, you can just play your workers on them and it's fine, they're in your city, it's all well and good. However, you don't start off with anything in your city and to get that stuff you're going to have to do things like building and getting resources, recruiting new workers, doing research and all of this requires you to go to the capital and to reach the capital you need to use exosuits because frankly the world has gone bonkers, the air is unbreathable and yeah that's the only way to do it. So this introduces a really interesting element because it's not just about having lots of workers it's also having the exosuits to be able to put those workers out where you need them or not just having lots of workers who are wasted because you don't have the exosuits for them and you don't have the buildings yet in your own city to use. So that creates a very interesting and different element itself to the standard worker placement. Otherwise, the worker placement aspect is quite standard. You'll have your workers, certain workers can go in different locations and gain different benefits for different locations for example. That's quite standard. If you're at a location you block it so someone else can't go. Again, standard. But it manages to do those standard things very well and then adding in this extra thing of powering these exosuits. So you get some for free, but you need to then power others, which means you need to get the resources to power them. You need to gauge, is it actually worth your effort spending the <laughs> actions and resources getting the stuff to power the exosuits to just use those actions to power more exosuits? Or is, is it better off not to power those exosuits? So there's a lot of depth and strategy in this game. This is not a light game. It is not a light game. It has very little luck. You will see there are a few dice and that does introduce an aspect of luck, but it's quite small and can be avoided in some ways. The main way that will really annoy people is the paradoxes because the way this works, this is where we get into the time travel and time travel causes paradoxes. There's a phase called warp where basically you call to the future and say, Oi, can you send me this mate? And they send it back to you. But that causes problems and that's where paradoxes arise. Whoever has the most warps in a timeline and you look at each timeline separately as you go into the future, you leave the previous timelines there with their warps you're then looking at each of those, whoever has the most has to roll this and you're going to get a value between 0 and 2 and if you get 0 all is fantastic however if you get 2 that can be really harsh because if you get three of these paradoxes you then get an anomaly and anomalies are really harsh, they're minus 3 points they're really difficult to get rid of because you need to get rid of like a ton of resources and a worker in order to close them and someone else could be there going, yeah, I've got loads of warps, but I keep rolling blanks and you keep rolling twos. That's the one area of luck 
but it's quite small in the scope of this game because this is a big game. There is a lot to grasp, a lot to understand, a lot to take into account. And that's why the decisions in this are so vital because that also, of course, that vital, that decision, having all of those, having so much to kind of think about, consider, oh, well, should I go do that? Should I go do that? Should I go do that? Means that it can be AP pro. That's, that's the way of this kind of heavy game. This is not a light game, but it's also not a difficult to play game, which is really interesting. It has the strategies of how you're gonna go after things. It has the tactics of what you're gonna do on that immediate basis. And then the small amount of luck from these dice, which is just enough luck to mean that it's acceptable with the length of game rather than ruining the game. So, what else is there to talk about? So, yeah, I've talked about how you time travel. Well, not really. I've talked about how stuff gets sent back. You see, you then actually do time travel yourself. And this is one of the key ways you can gain points, in fact, because the more you return stuff to the past, the more you go up your time travel track and you gain points that way. And you use these power plants in order to travel through time. You send someone back using these power plants and the different costs for these depending on which ones you've built. And they also have different ranges, how far back in time you can go. And if you take the thing that you were originally warped, so say I warped some water to me previously and I send someone back with water, I then fulfill the demand for that water. I kind of close that warp i close that paradox it's no longer a risk i remove that tile now this has a few benefits firstly i get to move along my time travel track getting points which is very good but it also means i can use that tile again which is very useful and some of these power plants you'll get points for going back in time as well so that's another way of getting points and it's just really cool that you can travel in time i mean the way they've done this whole time travel thing just works so well and i've never seen a game with this that manages to do it i've seen games try and do time travel and it just doesn't quite work here it works it is absolutely fantastic i think this that's the thing with this game it is a fantastic game but it is heavy, it is, it's not difficult to learn, but it is complex to play. And yeah, so it's not gonna be for everyone. There's very little randomness, but it is a great game if you can find the time to play it. Now, with regards to scaling, which I think is probably one of the few things I've not mentioned so far, this game does scale well. What I will say is that the two player game doesn't feel as cutthroat as the three and four player game and that's just because of the way the maps are laid out you're using the same map for a two player game same side of the board as you are for a three player game so it's understandable but the gameplay itself that same nature that you have from all worker placement games of ah oh, you've blocked me i needed to go there and oh well if i do this oh but first i need to do that but i also want to do that and i want to do this and you can never do everything you want to do and you're always going to be blocked somewhere or another means that it works for all the different player numbers. However, the more players you add, the longer the game goes. So three and four definitely has the more cutthroat feel, but I think two is probably my favorite player count. I don't know, I think I, I prefer the length of game for two player. I think it would be two or three player is my favorite. And it's because the three and four, you do have a much tighter board, a much cut, more cutthroat game, which can be pretty interesting. But then the two player is quicker, which appeals to me personally. Now, there is also, in this box, there's two modules. Now, the first module is one that will allow you to move when the impact's gonna happen, and it's quite interesting. It's called the Doomsday module, but I actually think even without that, this game is fantastic on its own. You add that in, it just makes it a bit more complex, a bit more difficult to learn and teach, definitely, but also a bit more difficult to play more decisions there. But the other module that is very good that comes in this is the solo variant, the Chronobot. And this is a fantastic solo game because you might think, oh, well, it's going to be so random. But the way they've controlled that randomness, there's a track that the kind of tokens are moving around and there's a dice you roll. So it is random. 
but certain actions are more common and you can look at the track you can see what's likely to happen lot that person if you will person is kind of seems to be aiming towards what they're likely to be trying to do and you can gauge on that but just with people it's not 100% predictable. You don't know exactly. You know, oh, well, I, I can see that they're trying to go for this building type thing. So they might want this. They might want that to do it. But you don't know which they're going to do. You don't know what order they're going to do them in. And it works really well. And as I was saying, with the way worker placement works, that inevitably someone is blocking you somewhere all the time. That still happens with the solo variant, which is why it gives such a great solo gameplay. It still feels like the same game. All you lose is that discussion and the interaction with the other players, which is a big part of gaming for me and I absolutely love. But people who love solo gaming, this is a fantastic solo game. So the final thing I want to talk about is components. Now the components on this are very good. You can see the size of this box, you get an awful lot and this is not everything, you know, but what there is is very good quality. The artwork is stunning other than one small little thing, which is for some reason they're not great at doing people. So anywhere you see people, they're, they're okay. They're, they're acceptable. They're just not up to the same standard as all these amazing futuristic landscapes that you see on the player boards, on the main board. And that's kind of a shame. But otherwise, the components and art, really good. The graphic design is very clear, very well done for what is a complex game. So that is my thoughts on Anachrony by Mind Clash Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, give it a like, give it a share put a comment down below saying what you enjoyed about it, what your thoughts are on it. And do also please check out the rest of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.